Hey, what's up guys? John here. Michael Burry has made a fortune betting against the market. 2007, 2008, he called the housing market crash perfectly and built a personal net worth of over $600 million on that one trade alone and sign asset management made billions in the process. Well, now he's made a bold, bold bet by selling his entire portfolio with the exception of one stock. He's holding on to just one stock. And this one stock to me gives a clear indication as to where he sees this world and this economy going. Take a look at this. The big short Michael Burry now only owns this one stock. Meet the company that profits the more people are put behind bars. Michael Burry capitulated the fame by being one of the very few to dodgedly bet against America's subprime market at the peak of the housing boom just before the collapse triggered the global financial crisis in September of 2008. Now the contrarian investor featured in the big short movie was surprised market watchers yet again by taking almost all of his $200 million in assets he manages out of the stock market save for his single solitary bet on a company that profits more people than the government puts behind bars. It is revealed in its latest 13F quarterly filing by Burry's Scion Asset Management revealed that he purchased half a million shares worth 3.3 million in Geo Group, a private prison operator. Headquartered out of Boca Raton, Florida, every other position was liquidated as of the end of June. So what does this say to me? To me, this says that he believes that potentially inflation could get out of control. Stock market is likely going to continue to crash. We are going to see more and more job layoffs. People are gonna be forced into financial hardship. And all this is going to do is increase the likelihood that people are going to be in desperate situations. And those desperate situations could land more and more people inside of prisons. And that could generate more tax revenue for this company, which in turn could generate large profits for Michael Burry and his partners. Right, so we're seeing Michael Burry making this bold prediction. Stock market crash isn't over according to an indicator, the perfect track record. The stock market is minted, a stunning rally amid hopes that the worst of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes have passed and inflation is cooled, but Bank of America analysts on Tuesday warned that prices remain too high and stocks still too expensive for the bear market to be over, at least according to one rule that's held perfectly true in the past. And the system is going through a phase change. Think about what that means, a phase change. They're changing the entire system, right? Why even China's tech bulls are dumping Alibaba and Tencent. So we're seeing this, you know, when we look at the economy in the next five years, 10 years, we're gonna see that we're in a completely different economy. This recession, this economic crash is not gonna be anything like we've seen in the past because we're gonna be stepping into a whole new economy, a whole new economy. On August 4th, Alibaba, the e-commerce powerhouse, reported that sales for those months declined 0.01% compared with the same quarter last year. Two weeks later, Tencent, the world's biggest distributor of online games, said year-on-year -year revenue in the same period declined by $20 billion, or about 3%. The announcement snapped a nearly two-decade streak of runaway expansion for the two companies, and according to some analysts, portend the end of an era for Chinese once flying high internet platform companies. Blistering growth rates for Chinese internet companies now look a lot like historically oddity and unlikely to return even after the current economic slowdown comes to an end, right? And we're seeing the Chinese real estate market, what they're doing, what's happening right now. China's property market is in free fall. What does this mean for the world economy? So we're seeing what's happening to China. We're looking at Argentina. We are looking at uh, all, all, of, all of the world. We're looking at Turkey. We're seeing record high inflation. Look at Europe. We're seeing the erosion of the euro. We're seeing record high inflation here in America. We're seeing uncertainty all across the world. With the current economic crisis and inflation at record highs, everyone, including investors, are looking for alternative assets to invest in and diversify their assets because the stock market is at its worst start in 50 years and at over $13 trillion wiped from the books. So what alternative options do you have aside from stocks? You want to go with something that protects you against inflation and rising interest rates. Here's one that I really like, it's Masterworks. The contemporary art they offer appreciated more than gold, real estate, and the S&P 
last time inflation was this high. And with Masterworks, you're getting this art in your portfolio at a fraction of the full price. Imagine owning shares in amazing masterpieces from artists like Pablo Picasso, Banksy, Andy Warhol, and more. It's not just about inflation. The price of this contemporary art and theirs have outperformed the S&P 500 total returns by 164% over the last 28 years. What's more, according to Citi, contemporary art has had the lowest correlation to public equities of any other major asset class. So you have an uncorrelated asset made stronger by inflation that also has a historical performance. It's pretty amazing. So how does Masterworks work? It's pretty straightforward. You go to Masterworks IO and you have to create your account and you link your traditional bank account. Next, you choose any available artwork to invest in or you go with a new blue chip art fund. Then Masterworks will hold onto the painting for between three and 10 years before selling it again. Although they have sold a few pieces before that time frame, and to date, the five pieces they've sold have returned a net average of 26.8% to investors. Even through COVID, a bear market and rising inflation, with inflation still high and the stock market in turmoil, investors are heading over to Masterworks so much that they've actually have a wait list. But if you click the link in my bio, you can skip it and start investing immediately at masterworks.io. I believe it is very, very smart, very prudent for all of us to have a well-balanced portfolio that can weather a storm when we look at simply just the data. $16 trillion in household debt right now in America, 16 trillion. We have 51% of all employers planning now or in the near future layoffs and we have 1.5 trillion auto loan debt. We have record high mortgage balances. We have a lot of problems. We have a lot of problems coupled with inflation, energy crisis, food shortages. All of this is all coming to a head at one time. The big question I ask myself is how do we avoid a real, real crash? I don't think we do, right? I think we just prepare for it. And the more prepared we are, the more opportunity will be presented to us for having been prepared in advance. Take a look at this. Household debt tops 16 trillion for the first time, fueled by higher inflation and interest rates. Household debt climbed past 16 trillion the second quarter for the first time as soaring inflation pushed up housing and auto balances. The New York Federal Reserve reported today, or Tuesday, the collective American IOU totaled 16.15 trillion through the end of June. Goods for 312 billion or 2% increase in the previous quarter. Debt gains were widespread, but particularly focused on mortgages and vehicle purchases. Americans are borrowing more, but a big part of that increased borrowing is attributable to higher prices. The New York Fed said in a blog post accompanying the release, mortgage balances rose 1.9% for the quarter or 207 billion to about 11.4 trillion, even though the pace originations had lowered. The annual increase marked a 9.1% gain from a year ago as home prices exploded during the pandemic era. Credit card balances surged 46 billion in the three month period and 13% over the past year. It's because people are putting inflation on a credit card. People have no other option. They have to, they have to get the food. They, they need the items. They have to pay for it today and they're gonna have to you know, make minimum payments tomorrow to make good for it. And credit card balances are likely only gonna be increasing as time progresses. Which federal researchers said was the largest gain in more than 20 years. Non-housing credit card balances increased 2.4% from the first quarter, the biggest gain since 2016. Student loan debt was little unchanged at 1.59 trillion. The increase in borrowing comes with inflation running at 8.6% annual rate in the second quarter. That includes a 9.1% increase in June, the biggest move since November of 1981. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, shelter inflation rose at 5.5% annual rate in June, and new and used vehicle prices were up 11.4% and 7.1% respectively. They say that uh, housing shelter costs rose 5.5%, but there's reports that rents have risen between 18.2% and 20%, right? And we've heard used vehicle prices up 40%. So I'm not sure how they're getting this 11.4%. Um, we're seeing record high inflation, record, record high inflation, much higher than what is you know documented here. And I think that a lot of people understand the true severity of what's happening in this economy. And I think it's up to all of us 
to just really, really absorb the information and just build out a really good plan. Build out a really good plan because things I think are gonna get really, really challenging. What do you think? I'm really curious as to your thoughts on the economy. Are you switching up or changing your investing strategy based on all of this change, everything that's happening in the world? Very curious, drop it below, let's talk about it. For more information on Masterworks, view the link in the description of this video. Subscribe here, subscribe to my second channel. I'll have my interactive call-in show this Friday and uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok up in the banner, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you're interested in being sponsored on my YouTube channel, visit cashnow.video forward slash sponsor and fill out the application.